Recently, I've been reading several comments about the said bookism. The idea that good writers tag their dialogue exclusively with the word said. But what's a dialogue tag? A dialogue tag is simply the words writers use to connect the character with the words that character speaks in the text. Words like said, but also exclaimed, whispered, shouted. The idea here is that the word said is invisible to the reading eye, but other tags will clutter up the flow of the dialogue and distract the readers. Good writers simply avoid all other dialogue tags. It's bad writers who use those words. But is this true? In science, after a hypothesis is introduced, it's generally accepted that it should be tested against observation. Chemists take to the lab to see if their calculations are correct. Geologists look for strata that will show that the theoretical process actually occurred in nature. Animal behaviorists take to the field to see if animals truly do behave in the way that the theory suggests. After a literary theory is promulgated, literary enthusiasts should do the same. So I grabbed some books off my shelf to see how well this squared with reality. Peeking into less than a dozen books in less than an hour, I discovered that set was in fact the most prominent tag, but alas, the great 20th century writers of English used a wide range of vocabulary. In fact, of all the highly respected writers of fiction in English, in this quick search, only Hemingway stuck closely to said. The most prevalent among the various tags were the words asked, answered, and cried. Indeed, the first two would probably be awkward to replace with said. Here's some examples of what I found. In John Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath, Pa demanded, What's the matter? The committee, Ma cried. Get over to that house and wash up, Ma ordered. In F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby, all from the same conversation. What's all that? He demanded. If somebody will come here and sit with her, he snapped. He whispered, let's get out. The goddamn coward, he whimpered. He didn't even stop his car. William Golden, Lord of the Flies. Piggy shouted, Ralph, please, Ralph. Piggy Specs, shouted Ralph. That Ralph cried out, oh God, oh God. To kill a mockingbird. Some frivolous girls yelled, Yoo-hoo! That's a compliment, explained Jim. Besides, Cal, this isn't the first time Atticus has left us, he protested. How about it, grinned Calpurnia. George Orwell, Animal Farm. Quick, quick, he shouted. Goodbye, boxer, they chorused. Fools, fools, shouted Benjamin. Ernest Hemingway, for whom the bell tolls. You did not, Robert Jordan insisted. He smelt of death. Robert Jordan jeered. The shipping news. You're a rotten, bitey shit, bald sunshine. She's not herself, that's certain, muttered the aunt. It doesn't work, daddy, sobbed sunshine. Call the wild, Jack London. All I get is 50 for it, he grumbled. How much did the other mug get, the saloon keeper demanded. A hundred was the reply. Wouldn't take a so less, so help me. That makes 150, the saloon keeper calculated, and he's worth it, or I'm a squarehead. The kidnapper undid the bloody wrappings and looked at his lacerated hand. If I don't get the hydrophobia, it'll be because you was born to hang, laughed the saloon keeper. Tolkien, Fellowship of the Ring. A matter of some importance. To us both, answered Strider. Yes, I do, replied Mugwort. Well, where is he now? cried several voices. And I say there's some mistake, repeated Buttlebur. The theory seemed to make sense, but I just didn't find it borne out in the literature. Perhaps better advice would be to view these alternatives like exclamation points. Don't overdo them.